Hello folks, Nick here with Nightlife Kennel. Um, coming at you this evening, I was actually down here at my bench uh, plugging up all my Sport Dog Tech 2 stuff and my light charging up for a hunt we're going to have tomorrow night. So hopefully we're going to film that and get y'all some footage tomorrow night. I'm going hunting my buddy Patrick, so that's always fun. Um, while I was at it, I had a guy message me on Facebook named Levi Holland. He lives somewhere around the Asheville area, which is like 30 minutes from me. Um, he had a question, said I should do a video on feeders, coon feeders, so um, what my opinions are and when and where to use them. So just wanted to give my two cents worth, and that's exactly what it's worth. Um, everybody's got an opinion, not saying this is the best or the right way to do it, but I found that it works for me. Um, feeders on when to use them. Um, two instances where I like to use feeders. One, um, well three technically if you have a small piece of property and you have a hard time keeping coon on it um put a feeder right in the dead middle of it um draw them as close to the center as you can and keep them on it um i wouldn't keep it slammed full of feed all the time if it runs out just for a week fill it back up uh the reason why is i don't like to turn any dog on top of a feeder especially a finished dog so if you know your feeder's been dry for a couple of days, turn your dog in there. Hopefully the coons ain't right on top of where it was, but you still got coons on the property. So um, another time I would use a feeder is in the hard winter months. Um, you get around January, February, um, whenever all the acorns have been eaten by the deer and the bear and turkeys and the coons, there's nothing else there. It's good to have some feed on there to keep your your coons uh where they sustain through the winter months especially your kittens um when they get bred after the rut you need to keep them well fed so that way uh if one they might stay on your property den up and have their litter um of uh kittens but two it just helps them get through the winter so that's a, that's my second uh time i would definitely have had feeders um thirdly is pup training and i know that's probably what everybody uses them the most for um what I would use feeders for pup training wise is, uh, again, um, if you got small piece of properties, put one in the middle. If you got a large piece of property, um, maybe put them on, in a line going through the middle of the property, once we get in the middle and end, so on and so forth. Keep them near water. Um, that way the coons got to travel. You know, they're coming to water, so they'll get to feed there. Um, pup wise, uh, once you start taking the pup out, and the age can vary from a few months old to some of them don't start till a year old. Once they start really going off, leaving your feet, and going with one of your experienced dogs, if you notice that they're starting to open on track, or maybe they're even getting up on a tree and opening a little bit, that's time to single your dog out, in my opinion. Best thing to do is take your pup then by itself, cut him in a piece of property that has a feeder that's drawing the coons to the property. Um, do not cut your dog on top of the feeder. I generally wouldn't want to cut my dog no closer than 100, 150 yards from the feeder, depending on the size of the property. Um, that way, the dog has to actually go hunt for coon. You're not turning loose around on top of scent. You're not making it real easy on him. Yes, he may make his way to the feeder, and he may grab scent right at the feeder, and he may tree you right on top of the feeder. Um, that's just par for the course, but there's a good chance there that he's going to catch a track from the coon heading toward the feeder, or even the coon that has left the feeder and going back somewhere else. So... Um, then he's basically run a wild track and all thing you did was supply coon on the property not an easy layup tree and yes they happen but um you might get some that, that he has to work for and that's the whole goal is you will make it harder on your pup every time he hunts and once he progresses make it harder and harder and that's what makes you a really fine hound in the end um you don't need a me too dog you don't need to be cutting the pup in there with an experienced dog on top of a feeder he's just He's just going to learn, you know, the, the other dog is going to do it for him and that the feeder is always going to supply coons there. So if you do that in the future, um, you turn a pup loose in an area that had a, you know, a, a feeder on it that he knew about. He may go right to that feeder and start hunting first. And that ain't what you want. You want the dog to go out from where you cast him and start looking for a coon track, you know, right there. So, um, yeah, that's that's my, my three main ones. Um, you know, use it to keep coons on the property. If you ain't got a lot to hunt like I do, uh, pups only. Once they uh, they're started on their own, turn them loose. Don't turn them around on top of it. Once they start run running good off of that, wing the feed feed down or start taking them to areas that don't have food. One time, then going back to another place you have a feeder. The next time you hunt, so on and so forth. 
and then fence dogs um try to avoid turn loose in areas that got feeders at all if you can but it's the only place you got to hunt um maybe one week keep feed in it and then let the feeder run out and not have no food on it the next week so that way your fence dog don't get lazy on you too so uh that's that's the three times that i would use feeders and how i would use them um generally just put corn in them i know some places allow you to have different types of feed and whatnot uh, where i live in north carolina you're not allowed to have nothing that's been processed at all so we can't put any additives in it we can't put um shelled peanuts we can't put dog food nothing we just uh shell corn that's it so depending on your local laws do what you want on that deal um corn works best around here um as far as how to make a feeder and preferred types it really depends on where you live um where we live here in western north carolina and levi i'm sure you'll know about this we're covered up in bear so um other areas that don't have any bear they can use simple deer feeder and let it throw it on the ground it works good um i've seen guys take five gallon buckets cut a hole in the bottom hang them from a tree coon just reaches in there and grabs it out um that won't work here bear will tear it all to pieces but i've also seen coons gnaw on and make a big hole where it just pours on the ground too so that's a cheap way of doing it but probably won't last very long um some guys take a tire on a rim like an old tire an old rim and they just drill holes in the sidewall pour the corn in it that works real good the bear roll it around don't generally tear it up very much my only issue with that is you know it can be kind of heavy to get in the woods and some of the places where i hunt um you know straight up and down mountains and stuff i don't want to tote a tire on a rim and corn on top of that the way I prefer to do feeders, and uh, my buddy Kim told me about this, um, what you do is you go to the Home Depot Lowe's and you get you like a 10 foot section of Schedule 40 PVC pipe, either three or four inch in diameter. Four inch is probably the better if you're in bear country. Um, you also get enough to where you can cut that in any length section you want. Um, you can cut in half, make two five footers, or like I did, I made five two footers. And then what I did on top of the PVC is I glued a end cap with a screw on lid. And then on the bottom, I put a uh, Y pipe that goes down to a one inch Y at the bottom. So you got three inch here and then a one inch here. And then you do a cap on the bottom of that. And what it is, is you can go in the woods, you unscrew the cap on the top, pour the corn in. It goes to the bottom and kind of fills up right here. The coon can reach in the one inch, but because it's schedule 40 and thick, he can't chew it up. Um, two big advantages of these. One, the bears, yes, um, I tie them up with like paracord to a tree. The bears will rip them down and they'll drag them all over the woods. And I mean, they'll, they'll do that. You can't avoid that. But generally at schedule 44 inch, they can't bust it. Um, they, might, they might chew that one inch 45 off there a little bit, um, but all that stuff's repairable um but generally they don't tear it up real bad so that's that's a big advantage of it and also where we live we have to walk so far in these woods um, a lot of times you can't drive forward or anything so toting a two foot section with enough corn in it just to fill it up is not hard on you to do versus carrying some of the deer feeders or you know whatever um so i think for the 10 foot section and the 45s the end caps um screw on kind and, and the other end cap to make five of those, I was, and yeah, and spray paint to paint them black. I was in it like a hundred or hundred ten dollars. So make five feeders, that's not bad. Um, and they last forever. I've had them for four or five years um, and I haven't had any kind of issues. So I try to get some pictures of them up and uh, just show you basically how I made them up. Uh, I had to go to the property and pull some off to show you that, but. So, Levi, I appreciate your question there on Facebook. I hope this uh, video helps you out some, gives you some good ideas, and anybody else too. So, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them at the bottom in the comment section, and I'll answer them as quick as I can. And if you would, just like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and share with your friends. So, hope you guys have a good night, and tomorrow we're going to get in the woods and try to get you guys some hunting footage. So, thank you all for joining me.